When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. We were watching a movie this weekend. Have you ever seen Zero Dark Thirty? Yeah, I've seen uh, pretty much every Special Forces movie or show that there is. I think you know that. Um, kind of like a fanatic. I mean, that stuff just gets gets my blood pumping, you know? Yeah, me too, man. I'm I'm like fanatical about like Navy SEALs movies. And uh, I've never met a Navy SEAL, but like, because they seem so mythical, but you know, you hear. <laughs> I've met two. I yeah, met another I one. That, I actually met another one this weekend. That's awesome, man. I hope I can yeah. meet Navy SEAL one day. There, there, there's just, just so many, um, just the secrecy around it and the just the badass shit that they do all the time is that you you find out about years later. But no, but we were watching Zero Dirt Thirty, and, and that's that's one of my favorite movies. And um, you remember? Okay, so so Maya is the special agent in the CIA that she's tracking Osama bin Laden down and she's focusing on his whereabouts and his habits and how the courier gets the messages to him and where he yeah. is. And there's just a whole string of uh, clues and people that she has to run down and follow up on and dead end after dead end and just, monotonous type work and you see her struggle with that and she starts to get on a hot trail for bin laden and she's trying to get this her superior to believe her and really have confidence in her and she even writes on his office door or office window every day like the number of days that have gone by that he hasn't done anything to help her push this what would you call it? Push this uh, operation through. Like she knows he's in that house in Pakistan. She knows yeah. it. And um, so the, what I want to focus on, what, what really stuck out to me in that movie the other night was she's sitting in the cafeteria at the CIA headquarters. And all of a sudden the, the director comes in and he's played by James Gandolfini um, and I think that was Louis Panetta is who he was playing, the director at the time. I could be wrong on that. But so he sits down at the lunch table with her and she's just, it was unexpected. I mean, the director doesn't usually come down there and mingle with the, with the, with the others. But so he sits down and he's asking her questions. And one of the questions was like, did, did we recruit you out of high school? And she said, yeah. And he said, you know why we did that? And, you know, it's starting to get it to be a really intense scene. And she's like, I don't think I can answer that. And he said, so how long have you been doing this? How long have you been working on this Osama bin Laden? And she had previously told him she'd been there for 12 years. He said, how long have you been working on this? Because he had caught wind that she'd been writing on the window and she's real fanatical about get, pushing this through. And she said, nothing. I've worked on nothing else for 12 years. And it was a real powerful part of the movie because he, he realized then he was like, she's been focusing on nothing else, but this, and she's honed her skills at this one thing alone. And then the project, I mean, the, the, the operation shortly after that, they got a green light on it. And we just, I just thought about that and how focused and how intent you have to be in your business. If you want to grow and you want to get out of the truck and you want to be successful. And I'm not even talking about making a lot of money. I'm just talking about making a system a organization work. I mean, you really have to have that kind of laser focus for a sustained period of time. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes total sense. I mean, you're talking about you're talking about taking someone that's been a plumber for whatever, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, however long it is, right? Mm -hmm. 
And now you got to completely change your mindset, which is insanely hard to do. I mean, we've both done it and you got to completely almost alter who you are as a person, right? Because you're, you know, the, the first thing when you meet someone, right? You meet, so I was just, I was at this big East coast, uh, like entrepreneurship event this weekend. Um, so, you know, I met a ton of new people. Um, some people were people that I met last year or the year before, but I met a whole bunch of cool people. And the first thing you do when you meet someone is you're like, Oh, hi, I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. Oh, what do you do? Oh, what do you do? Right. That that's what adults do when they meet new people. What do you do for a living? Um, and you kind of get sized up by that. Yeah. Um, so it becomes such a part of who you are because you're constantly introducing yourself as Matt, the plumber, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a plumber. Oh, I'm a plumber. Oh, I'm a plumber. And then it's, oh, I own a plumbing business. Oh, I own a plumbing business. Oh, I own a plumbing business. Um, but you're still a plumber. Uh, so, you know, in the back of your mind that that's, that's probably, I mean, for, I'll speak for myself. It's probably, you know, 75% of who I was. I'd love to say 50, but it was probably 75, right? Like I'd love to say, oh, I was 50% a plumber, 50% a husband and father, right? But it was yeah. probably 75 because that's where I spent 75% of my time. Yeah. And there's a comfort in saying, I'm just a plumber because they don't want to, they, they don't want to know a whole lot. Mm -hmm. You know, They may say, oh, I needed a plumber the other day or, oh, I, you know, you always got work or you, I bet you guys stay busy. We, you know, but if you say I'm just a plumber, that kind of lets you fly under the radar. Nobody's curious about much, but when you say I'm the CEO of a plumbing company and you start taking yourself seriously and you, you, you kind of put your shoulders back and your chest is sticking out a little bit and you're confident that you're running a successful plumbing company and you say, yeah, I'm, I'm Tony, I'm, 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 I own the, I own Wally plumbing in mobile. And then it's like, maybe there's more curiosity because in, in your setting, you're talking to um, high level individuals that are going to be curious about what, what, how many people do you have? That's usually the next question. How many people do you have? That's yeah. what I size you up to. Yeah. Um, and I actually met um, a guy that, We've known, we've known who each other are for a couple of years, right? Like he owns a plumbing company one county away from me yeah. uh, and kind of similar, it seems, you know, in, you know, branding and same day service and no nights, weekends. And we've had each other's phone number for maybe like six or nine months now. And it'd be like, you shoot him a text. He'd be like, hey, you want to meet up for lunch and chat? No, I'm busy. He'd shoot me a text. You want to meet up for lunch and chat? And he actually just got a second shop right in, in the same like industrial park that our shop's in. Uh, so I've been looking forward to meeting him. Uh, and there's just like, it amazes me. There, there's like more than one way to skin a cat, right? Like he's got 16 guys in eight trucks. That to me was mind blowing. I was like, that's like quick numbers that's 400 grand a year in helpers that are making no money like right. you know maybe they can improve efficiency here and there on some jobs but like for the most part not every job every time yeah. for the most part these guys are making you no money um and i was like why do you have two guys in each truck and he would just wouldn't tell me he's like oh it's my secret i'm not telling oh it's a secret it's a secret it's like all right well keep your secret i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing <laughs> yeah well, and also when you start, when you, when you do focus on things and you start to, to hone in on what's important, just like you said, like if, if you're talking to us, we'll tell you a certain number of things in our system that are important. You talk to another guy, man, I, I keep two people in every van. I don't understand that. I have people in our area that I've seen ride around to, to a truck and I, I don't understand that. But I won't talk about what I don't understand. I'll talk about what I do understand. And, and that's focusing on, we can call it key performance indicators that matter and dealing with the information like that. Like 
like one of the first things right out of the gate that you have to really be accurate on is your pricing, you know, and we're from the mindset that there's a going rate of $150 an hour, less than that, really. And that's depending just on not your true. Depending on your market, but yeah. Yeah, it's just not true. That That is not true. And I never, I never stop to ask, why is everybody charging that? You know, it's somewhere between 125 and 150. And it, it's just because everybody else was charging that. But those type of, those people are still in the truck. They're still in the truck by themselves. And when you charge something like that, you can't grow because you're charging just enough to barely make it. And they're all there's a whole array of other expenses that you're not taking into consideration when you charge like that. So getting pricing right is important and you have to know what criteria to look at to get your pricing right. Yeah. You also need the persistence, like, you know, relating it back to zero dark 30, cause that's what you're doing pretty much is, you know, she had the persistence to keep going. Even when people told her that, he was, she was never going to find him, right? Yeah. She's not, ne um, you're never going to find him. He's he hiding in a cave somewhere. You're never going to find that cave. He's probably dead somewhere, right? No one's yeah. heard from him in six months. No one's heard from him in nine months, 12 months. There hasn't been anything on him, right? But she had that thick skin to keep moving. And that's something that going through these things, you're going to have to kind of have, because like you said, there are those people that are of the mindset that there is a going rate. It's $120 an hour, it's $140 an hour, whatever it is. And you're going to catch some flack for that, right? Like there's going to be people that are going to call you sellouts or tell you that you're ripping people off or people that don't understand business are going to think you're just, you're just doing what those, those big companies do and you're trying to take advantage of people, right? Yeah. Plus it takes work to find out how much it costs your business to operate per hour and it's the easiest thing to do is just to say, well, Joe's plumbing down the road is charging this amount. I'll just either undercut them or I'll charge a little bit more. And that's just not based on any factual information. And it will, it will drive you out of business, you know, and real quick, you know, there are some customers that have the mentality that things should only cost a certain amount. And through no fault of their own, that's just a that's just something that they feel. You know, if you ever had a conversation, a factual conversation about what it costs to deliver the value that we deliver, and customers, you you got one that wanted to hear, like I really want to know, and you explained it, it would make a lot more sense. You know, mm -hmm. but you're right, you have to stay focused, and you have to. You have to know the facts and you have to let the facts lead when you, when you're coming up with a proper dollar amount for each task. And it has to be flat rate too. We can yeah. get into that. I felt like, yeah, I mean, something. you're really, you're going to, during that process, you're going to find every way to control that number. Just the way you have for however long you've been in business. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm in control of what I charge an hour. This is the going rate. This is what I'm going to do. And then you start putting it into this calculator and then it's, well, what if I pay myself a little bit less? Oh, what if I change the profit from this to this? Oh, what if I say we have two trucks? Cause we're going to have two trucks in a couple months. And what, what if I say we have two trucks and then what does that do to the hourly rate? And you're going to start to try and manipulate it that way in, in your calculator. And that's going to lead you to the same place. And you, want, you don't want to cut corners. You you have a tendency, like you said, that that mindset will, will lead you to cutting corners. And when you get to a point where you start hiring individuals, you want to be able to afford those, those high caliber individuals that can really uh, be an asset to your team. And you want to be able to take care of those, those team members, you know, and, the goal is to be able to pay them a comfortable living and afford them a vacation that they don't have to feel like they're 
taking a hit to go on vacation, you know, but you can't do that if you charge some bottom of the barrel prices, you can't provide for your team yep. and you're, you're, you're responsible for your team and you're responsible for, to make, to make a way for them to provide as much happiness and freedom for their families as well. Hey, plumbing pro, you wouldn't plumb a house without a blueprint. So why are you trying to build your plumbing business without one? Grab your free copy of my million dollar plumber blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining and very profitable plumbing business. Don't risk years of wasted time and money and failure. Grab your million dollar plumber blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner follower. Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free and plumb like a champion. But another thing, you know, so you have to focus on pricing and you have to really be honest about that and you have to be confident enough to go forward with it, even though initially it may seem like it's too much money. But you've got the facts laid out. This is what it costs to run. Uh, then you have to find a way to make the phone ring, you know, you have to find a way to get those calls coming in. And I mean, for now, Google is the way Google LSAs is the way people depend on Google reviews. They size you up by the number of reviews or at least the quality of the reviews. And in order to get those reviews, you have to be on Google. And in order to be seen on Google, you have to be at the top. So that's a whole ball of wax that you're going to have to tackle and pretty quickly. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, cause you know, it may be a very silly movie, but if there was one thing that Ricky Bobby's dad was right about is if you ain't first, you're last man. That's and I know he, I know, and I know, I know in the movie, he says, Oh, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> he said it later on after he believed yeah, it all in life. Yeah. <laughs> he believed it his whole life. He's like, wow, I said that? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. But when it comes to Google, Ricky Bobby's dad was spot on, man. I mean, He's right. if you ain't first, you're last. Your phone ain't going to ring. If you ain't first on LSAs or PPCs or the map pack, or all three of them, hopefully, like, you know what's calling you. It almost seems like there's something wrong. Like, why are they so far down? If, yeah, you know, what when, when you get the caliber of customer that depends on those reviews and they're not just shopping around for the lowest price. Yeah. They're going to wonder what's wrong. Why are they at the bottom or toward the bottom? If they mm -hmm. even scroll that far, I would, I would venture to say that if you're not in the top three, maybe, maybe on the first page, but definitely they're not scrolling past the first page. I would. They, no, they're not even going to click that button that says see more. Yeah. You know, you got to be in those top two or three, depending on where they're looking at it on the phone or on the computer, you know? Yeah. And there's a little bit of a process to get Google verified, Google guaranteed, and start running those ads, but you have to do it. And the the process of that, it's not rocket science, but it, it takes focus and it takes patience, really, because you have to go through a background check, which is another added benefit for customers and they though they may not realize it that Google is is they're they're bankrolling you pretty much if you do something wrong not I think bankrolling was the wrong word but if you do something wrong they, they can go to Google and say hey this company um didn't do what they said they were going to do and then they will investigate that you know so yeah. Google's taking taking a lot of responsibility for putting you up there uh, but my point was, you know, you have to you have to register, you have to go through the background chat, you have to turn in all sorts of documentation to get yourself mm -hmm. uh, verified, and that you have to do it. But it's work. Yeah, and I mean, once you get it done, besides the phone starting to ring with leads you otherwise wouldn't have gotten through word of mouth or referral or something like that. On top of that. It's the cheapest cost per acquisition for a customer really in the game. I mean, you're going to pay a lot more on Facebook or even through Google PPC. Like if they're not organically searching for Wally plumbing in Mobile, Alabama, 
um, and then clicking on your listing on your Google My Business, or they're not looking in your company up or looking in the phone book, right? There's still some people that use the phone book. Um, I, you know, believe it or not, we get a lot of customers that, you know, we automate automatically send a text when the technician leaves, like asking for a review. We mm -hmm. get like a decent amount of customers that are like, I will never go on Google. Yeah. I don't have a Google account. Um, so you got to find ways to reach those other customers too. But it, it's by far, I mean, I think ours is, it ranges between like 30 and $50 cost per acquisition. Yeah. Ours is right around 40 most of the time. So that's yeah. pretty, pretty consistent. Even, even though I am uh, in Alabama and you're in New Jersey. Yeah. But, but you're right. I mean, if you do things like, well, I won't, I won't get into to the other things that are, uh, they cost a lot less per acquisition, but just that whole process, uh, and then when the phone rings, you do have to have a system for booking those calls. Like the CSR, I would say is I would probably hire a CSR before I would hire my first technician. You know what I mean? If you think about it and you're in the truck, how many times have you been laid up under a um, sink and trying to answer the phone and think further about how that sounds to the customer I mean, do you think you sound welcoming when you answer the phone and you're like, hello? Like, it sucks. Yeah. I think I always think back to uh, when I think about the customer experience, you know, I like some people may know I'm third generation. Mm -hmm. So I think to, back to how my grandfather used to answer the phone and he would pick up the phone. He go, plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably how you sound when you're under that sink. Like you just dropped your basin wrench on your forehead, your forehead hurts, you're hungry because it's two o'clock and you haven't had a chance to eat lunch. Uh, and someone's calling about something and you don't have time for it, or maybe you do have time for it and you can't even think about how much time you have for it. You're just like, Yeah, what do you want? What do you want from me right now? Yeah, in the simple act of stopping what you're doing, which was we'll just go with the scenario of you being under a kitchen sink. You're trying to get the, the uh, capture nuts off of a kitchen sink faucet and somebody calls with another, it's, it's really another opportunity for you to go make a living, but it doesn't feel that way when the phone rings. It's like, man, I got to answer the phone. And I not only have to answer the phone, I got to get up. I got to go out to my truck. Probably I got to get out a notepad and write down their information and then tell them I'll call them back. And if you even call them back, there were so many times when I was in a truck by myself where I was just so laser focused on trying to get one task done at a time that I wouldn't call them back to until the end of the day because I would forget. So many things mm -hmm. happen during that job when you're the only one that people can get answers from. You've answered the phone probably 10 times. Not only does that, I mean, that's a whole conversation there it looks bad to the customer mm -hmm. because uh even though you hopefully you're charging flat rate and they already agreed to the price but if not they're looking at their clock like man he's on the phone he's not focused on my job and really you're in a no man's land where you're not focused on this customer and you're really not focused on this customer because you're trying to get back to what you were doing mm -hmm. so that's my argument for hiring a CSR before you even hire another technician, because when you can get away from that phone and you can have somebody that can do all that and that can create that welcoming voice and a source of information for customers to call and just keep those phone calls off of you, that in itself will be a absolute game changer for you. Yeah. Or even just the follow-up calls, right? Like you sat down this morning and, you know, you said, oh, I'm going to go to this job, then I'm going to go to this job, then to this job, then to this job. And you you had four jobs on your schedule, right? So you called the customers. You said, I'm coming to you first thing. You said to the second one, oh, I'll be there between 10 and 12. Oh, I'll be there between 12 and 2. Oh, I'll be there between 2 and 5, right? Whatever it is. And now all of a sudden it's, you're still on the first job and it's 1215. 
and because something went wrong or this, that, or the other thing, or you, you good thing you sold more work, right? You were mm -hmm. there to look at something and she was like, oh, can you look at my water heater? Because something seems weird with that. And then you sell a water heater, right? Well, you got to get that job done now. Uh, well, you should be getting that job done now. There's plenty of times where I've been like, oh, yeah, I'll come back for it tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Because I got this slam schedule and I don't know what to do. But, you know, at 12.01 or sometimes even 11.45, that phone's going to ring with that customer that you said, oh, I'll be there between 10 and 12. Oh, where's Tony? Tony said he's going to be here between 10 and 12 and it's almost 12 and, you know, I got somewhere to be at one and, you know, so even just to deal with those follow-up phone calls uh, and kind of put those fires out, whereas, you know, before maybe they're calling your cell phone and they're leaving a voicemail, where are you? Where are you? I got somewhere to be at one and you're in the middle of something. You're like, oh, I just got to call him back later. Got to call him back later. In the meantime, they're like, forget this, man. I'm just going to call someone else that's actually going to show up. Yeah, because you're giving them reasons to say no to you. You don't sound professional. You don't sound like you're paying attention to them. You don't sound like you're interested in the job because you're you probably come off kind of grumpy that you had to even answer the phone. Even if you're trying not to, I mean, you're, you're working, you're doing something different. Uh, and you can tell as a customer, we can tell when somebody's distracted and they're talking to us, you know. Yeah. So it's just a huge thing that I would recommend right out of the gate. And I think there's an anxiety there that people will feel like they won't be able to keep a CSR busy. They won't be able to give them enough to do, but a CSR is so valuable. They can do not only answering the phone, but they can do so many other things to help you if you're if if you're the the doctor so to speak and you're the one that has to do all the plump, the 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 operating you can't be bothered by making appointments for yourself think about it like that yeah so well i mean if you're bothered by it right and let's say you had four jobs on the schedule and now you only get to one job because three of them canceled mm -hmm. you're not making much of a living especially if you're still charging 120 bucks an hour yeah. Well, and two, you have to be about the business now of learning the system of triage and calls, booking every job for the day for today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that doesn't just come natural. Like we didn't start doing that until we learned it in the success Academy. And yeah, um, booking every call for today is an art form alone. And you have to have somebody that can keep the customer's, up to date. Like if you're, if you're a one man show and you've told four people that you'd be there between eight and 12, like we have four hour windows. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if you told it four people that you'd be there between eight and 12, and then it is 1130 and you're the one that's stuck on the, the water heater that you can't get the ball valve to shut off. And you keep having to switch, uh, you keep having to switch <laughs> drip pans because you can't get it to shut off. Are you really going to call all four of those customers in the midst of what's going on and say, hey, I know I said I'd be there at by 12, and I'm sorry about that. Well, I've just run into a, a problem that I'm. it's just taking me a little bit longer, and I will be there. I'm just, I'm just trying to update you. I will be there uh, between 12 and 4. You're not going to do that. You're just going to – you're going to make a customer mad because they – only have those four hours to wait on you well your potential not, customer they're probably not going to be your customer. customer after that experience right that's right finding and hiring the right tech for your team can be challenging applicant pro makes it simple and easy your personal applicant pro hiring professional will do the brunt of the work for you writing job ads that will get you maximum applicant exposure manage the advertising of your jobs to over 20 major and local job boards even a pre-hire risk assessment is included to ensure your candidates match the role expectations and your company values. To learn more about Applicant Pro and to take advantage of special discounts just for Coach's Corner listeners, go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash Applicant Pro. Which so, is important to note. Um, and the other thing that goes into that, that booking every call for today and, you know, having a CSR, all that kind of stuff. The other thing that goes into that is is having a dispatch fee or an evaluation fee or whatever you decide to call that. 
because you know like you said before um i forget what you were actually talking about but you were like you know there's going to be the customer that what'd you say before about the customer that's not going to like your pricing or something like that oh they just come up with a price that they think things should cost oh right yeah so yeah they they have a preconceived notion they googled it their friend told them it should be about this much oh my brother's cousin's uncle's father is a plumber in some city nearby you and he said that that's absolutely insane uh but by having that having that dispatch fee or evaluation fee that's really big in pre-qualifying your customers because what that says is if they're willing to pay whatever that dollar amount that you set that is at is, they're willing to pay to have a professional come to their house and diagnose the issue before knowing how much it's going to cost. They're willing to commit to paying you to have someone actually come and they're not just saying, oh, I know it's the flapper. He needs to come change my flapper. I had the same thing happen two years ago. I know, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, oh, wait, hang on. My toilet's not working. I don't know what's not working because I don't know anything about toilets. I know last time it was the flapper, uh, but it could be something different because there's a lot of pieces in there, right? So why don't I why don't I call a plumber and oh it, oh ninety two dollars for you to come out and take a look and tell me what's wrong? Okay, yeah, come out, take a look at it, and then and then we can go from there. Yeah, and the the professionalism of the CSR to make sure the customer knows. Listen. We charge a dispatch fee to come out. However, if we do any work at all, that fee is waived. And yeah. for somebody to be able to explain that in a professional way, look, you're not bringing us a car that we can say, yep, the fender's in it. It'll cost this amount of money. If you want us to do it, we can get started. It's not like that. There's so much involved in us getting on the road, paying for gas, paying for insurance, paying for the technician, on and on and on. I could go on and on for a long time about what it costs to just get to your door. But you don't do that on every call. That's not it's not professional to do. So a CSR that talks and speaks with confidence and uh, reassures the customer that we are available and we can take care of your plumbing problem is is priceless in my opinion. And yeah. I have a good one. We we love our CSR. We love how she can just empathize with our customers, and that that takes practice and she's had yeah. years of practice. So, yeah. And focus and even from that first line, right? Like they tell her, Oh, I got a problem with my toilet or my water heater or, Oh, I woke up this morning and had no hot water. Sure. We could take care of that for you. Have we done work for you in the past? Yeah. I mean, that just shows, yes, we, we can take care of your problem. Don't hang up and call someone else and we'll be there today. Yeah. And you may not know it as a customer that that has taken Hours and hours and hours of focused practice to keep you on track when you're in a panic as a customer to to know what questions to ask and to know how to get you off the phone so we can get somebody out there. All of that needs to take place really when you're still a one man show. Yeah. And that's going to get you to the point where you can start putting money away to have a rainy day fund where, where you do, when you do hire somebody, you can to not be so paranoid that you're going to run out of money because now you're paying somebody else. But, you know, yeah. And then the last thing we should probably touch on with, you know, cause you're going to start hiring people after you put all these systems in is that you need to have a flat rate price book that you can depend on that, you know, your numbers and, you know, you can implement that into your business. And then it doesn't matter if it's you going out there, or tech number one, two, three, four, or 55, because it's the same pricing. It's the same system. CSR is going to book it. It's going to end up on someone's schedule. They're going to go there and they're going to know your system for presenting those options and selling that work and performing that work. And there's a system there for all of it from, from the time the phone rings. And maybe we could do that in a future episode is just go through the sales service process, right? Yeah. Um, but from, from the time the phone rings to the time we collect and ask for a review, there's everything has a process and it's important to kind of dive into that. So, you know, if, if you don't have a process for one of those things or all of those things, 
I think it's important to, you know, maybe reach out, you know, and start to put these processes into place so you can scale because the common, the common thing is like you said before, oh, I'm just a plumber. Mm -hmm. I'm just a plumber. I'm going to be stuck in this truck till I'm 65. And then, you know, then I'll take, you know, whatever little money I was able to save up over all those years. And uh, then we'll sell our house. Right. And we'll downsize to maybe a condo in Florida and, uh, you know, I'll get social security and everything will be fine. Yeah. And the focused effort it takes to do all these things and to create a price book that you can depend on, it is focused effort and it's, it's painful, but your, your guys will appreciate it because they have to do less thinking and less planning when they're actually in front of the customers. And that's really who, that's really who we work for. We work for the people who work with us. You know, we're trying to make their job as not as easy as possible, but as practical as possible. Like, and that's what the, that's what the price book that you create will do. You focus your efforts on that price book and your technicians will have a much easier time closing the, the sale to the customer and servicing the customer properly because they won't have to spend 30 minutes out in the truck rewriting something that you already wrote. So yeah. yeah, and all of these things that we talked about in this meeting are are on, on this episode are really geared for stopping the bleeding, right? If if you're if you've been in business for a while and you can't figure out why there's no money left at the end of the month, or you're just starting out, if you're just starting out, we can really help you avoid these pitfalls. But if you've been in business and you just really feel like all you own is a job, we can help. And those are some of the things that we talk about with our private clients and the nuts and bolts to get those things in place. And it really does. It is an immediate turnaround for your business. Mm -hmm. I know it was. Yeah. For yeah. It was for me as well. So yeah, if you feel, if you could relate to any of these things that we've been talking about today and you're looking for help with that, reach out. Um, I believe the changes happened, but let me double check that. And you could just riff for a second. Yeah. Well, I mean, th there are other things that we kind of hit the cliff notes to kind of getting your business turned around or getting it started off on the right foot. But most of the people that we talk to are kind of at a dead end and they don't know why what they're doing is not working and they don't have any free time to spend with their families. And that's not what they went into business for. They went into business most likely so you could be your own boss, call your own shots, have freedom to spend doing what you wanted to do, and it just didn't turn out that way. Well, that's the story I come from, and, and I turned it around. So if you need help, reach out. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below, and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.